East, we are going to move to the NFC East, and we're going to start this thing off with the Washington football team. Now, obviously, My Washington football team, baby. <laughs> I love this football team so Chris, much. Chris oh, has got like too. six teams, man. Six <laughs> teams. Ron Rivera, of course, the second-year head coach, uh, beat cancer last year. Always a good thing. And and I love what they are doing there. Obviously, we there wasn't a lot to like about Washington for a long time. You bring in Ron Rivera, you get an adult in the room, and it changes the fortunes of the entire franchise. They make the playoffs last year. Um, the the quarterback, I think that they everybody thought that they should go and draft a quarterback. It, that wasn't really a need in their eyes. They got Fitzpatrick and they got uh, Heineke. Or is that how you say it, Kyle? Yeah, Ty, yeah. Tyler Heineke, Heineke, whatever Heineke, whatever. whatever. And so they're they're treating him basically as a rookie. Uh, he was somebody who played mm-hmm. in the XFL. And and I think it's worth taking a shot on him. I mean, in the playoff game, at, they gave the the Bucks the most trouble of any team in the playoffs. And, That's right. And I was I was impressed with what he was able to do getting a shot later on in the year. Their uh, their needs were listed as quarterback. Again, explain that one. Safety, mm-hmm. offensive tackle, wide receiver, and linebacker. And here's what they did. First round, they went and got a linebacker. Jamin Davis out of Kentucky, and I, I like this guy. love this kid. He, uh, hey, Chris, do you remember the interception return that kind of broke the back of Tennessee and basically yeah. ended the Jeremy Pruitt era? I, I was just about to say, yeah, this was uh, – That's the linebacker. Gorantano is the one that threw that one, right? That would be correct. Okay, that would I be remember correct. it happened, but he came out – he got benched in that game. I was trying to think. Yes, did he, he did. Throw, I, I just he, assume all their interceptions. And, and this kid's anyway. a linebacker. I mean, he's he I is know. a bruising – and he caught it and ran it 70 yards back and has speed. Stud. He can cover. He's, he's an athlete, he can, man. He's a freak. Oh, he, and he will beat you to death. He's awesome. Yes. So I love him. Uh, offensive tackle in the second round, Samuel Cosme out of Texas. Like that pick. A pretty big dude. I, I think that's – he's a super athletic offensive tackle. That's, I think that's what you're going to need with this offense uh, if they're moving the direction I think they are. Quarterback Benjamin St. Juiced out of Minnesota. Uh, third round, Deami Brown, wide receiver out of North Carolina. Another stud guy. They got him in the third round. Fourth round, tight end John Bates out of Boise State. Safety, Derek Forrest out of Cincinnati in the fourth round. Sixth round, now you start taking your flyers, right? Cameron Cheeseman, awesome man. <laughs> Long. Cheeseman uh, out of Michigan. Edge rusher in the seventh round, William Bradley King. This is a kid that transferred from Arkansas State over to Baylor and was lights out. A uh, really good player. I, I like the fact that they took a shot here. Uh, edge rusher Shaka Tony out of Penn State, another guy that produced at that level. Uh, wasn't highly looked at as, you know, a big-time draft pick, but he produced at the college level in the Big Ten. I, I'm a fan of him. And seventh-rounder wide receiver Dax Milne out of BYU. Uh, that's one of those kids that, that caught a bunch of touchdown passes from Zach Wilson. He was a lot bigger than most of the people that he played against, but uh, but he's a stud, absolute stud. They got some, they got some dudes. I am a fan of what Washington did here. I think that they, uh, I think they hit this thing. Yeah, I, I like what Wash. I like this team too. This defense is going to be absolutely nasty. I do think next year you'll probably see this team as the best defense in the NFL. I thought they were one of the two. Them along with the Rams last year were probably the two best defenses. Maybe you could throw the Saints into that conversation. And then they just go out and bolster it even more. And look, they are one of the few, especially teams we expect to compete for a playoff spot who have no idea what their future quarterback is going to be. But they didn't reach here because teams forget. Guess what? Next year in the draft, there's going to be another five, six, seven guys who everyone needs to trade up for. And this is your court. So it happens every year. It's not like it's one year. This is the only year you can get a quarterback. And if you don't do it this year, you're screwed for the. No, that's absolutely ridiculous. And I love the Ryan Fitzpatrick signing. I thought it was absolutely phenomenal. They also signed William Jackson. This team is going to be tough. I love the kid, uh, Diami Brown, to go along with Terry McLaurin. Uh, they signed a free agent wide receiver. Curtis Samuel. Slipping. Curtis Samuel, thank yeah. you very much, out of Carolina. So this offense is going to be exponentially better. If they would have had Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback in that playoff game, they probably would have beaten the Bucs. I'm dead serious about that. Ooh, that's that defense won the damn Super Bowl, man. That, <laughs> that, well, let's say Tampa Bay got pretty lucky on the way there. A oh. very close game against Tyler Heineke. A missed pass interference call against the Saints. Lucky. where an in, Both interceptions by Sean Murphy Bunting, which swung both of those games, were missed pass interference calls that were were easy to see. I don't know what the refs were looking at and changed the dynamic of both of those games. 
I'm just saying Washington's defense is nasty. This is, in my opinion, they're the team to beat in the NFC East. I like their draft. I like their free agency. The only thing I don't like, how long does it, imagine if you had a kid and it took you a year and a half to give them a name. You just called it kid for a year and a half. That kid's going to be a serial killer. No, no, okay. No, no, Straight no, no, up no, no, serial you're just, killer. You're so give the team right a name. Here. You're so wrong right here. I love the football team. I absolutely <laughs> love the football team. I am abs- I'm in. I'm so in. I can't even explain it. Oh, I love boy. this team for one reason. What would Two reasons right now. Two of my favorite men, and they're just football guys. It is Ron Rivera and Blackjack Del Rio, baby. There you go. This is this is without question going to be the best defense in the NFL because of those two men. They are building this team the way they want to, which is old school football tough guys that will bully the hell out of everybody. These NFC East teams that are soft as hell have no clue what's about to hit them this year. None at all. I do. I do agree with you. If they had a trigger man last year, they'd be a lot better. I think this offense is going to be so much better. I don't know how good Heineke can actually be, but I know this. Fitz magic is he's still got a lot of fight left in him. All right. (laughs) He's still got plenty of life left in that arm and they've got some athletes on the outside. They've got a lot of speed at skill player position. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and I, I think the football team is really really good i am not a huge fan of the nfc i do not think it is nearly as as there aren't as many teams in the nfc that i think can win the conference as i think are in the afc i i would take a flyer shot on getting a super bowl ticket on this team Okay, we got to talk about this name thing, though. So let's say you get a cat from the lady across the street, and you just name the cat. Hey, cat, but I got from the lady. It's such a this big... Is, but hang on now, this or, is not a hey, cat. Hey, kid who came out of my this wife's hole. Like, no, you can't name the kid that. You can't this give him those team, basic... And they're general. called the football team, all right? it's That WF2. kid would be a serial killer. That's all it. I'm saying. I love it. Nope. <laughs> That's fine. This is not a child. This is not a cat. This is a football team. What are they? They're a football team. This is exactly what I would think Riverboat Ron would come up with. Yeah, uh, to win the Super Bowl, the football team. to win the Super Bowl, Washington is plus five thousand. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a huge number. There's not a lot of teams in the NFC I love. Let's assume that there's a there's a fifty fifty chance that Aaron Rodgers isn't in Green Bay. Outside of Tampa Bay, tell me who you're in love with to win the Super Bowl right hey, now. Hey, I on, like the Rams. Uh, I don't love the Rams. Odds Rams to and win. my Forty Nine ers. They're going to be healthy, baby. Odds to win the NFC. You can get Washington at plus two thousand. I like that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just telling you. Uh, like we all yeah. assume that Matt Stafford's gonna, gonna go and all of a sudden be this guy that he's never been before. I think he's gonna be way better than he's ever been. But, yeah. but let's just hold off on the fact that the guy's never won a playoff game. He's only made it yeah. to one or two playoff games in his life, yeah. and all of a sudden now he's gonna win a Super Bowl. Let's just chill the hell out, okay? Yeah, they're yeah. Uh, they're plus six fifty to get there. Same as the yeah. 49ers. I mean, he just got to be a little better than Jared Goff, which I feel like he can do. I, I feel pretty good about that because Jared Goff's a can. No, nah, but He's that terrible. team, hang on now. The team that they've got now is not not as good offensively it's as true. the team that Jared Goff had. That yeah. That's the difference is that Super Bowl team, that offense had like three weeks in a row where, where they put up like 40 or 50 points back to right. back to back. They had right. much better skilled players back then than sure. they do now. That is sure. true. That is true. Yep. The New York football giants. And Dave Gettleman has found a new trick. I don't know if you guys saw this. But Crazy. He, he traded back twice in this draft. He's never done it before. He, he figured out, holy crap, people give me more picks for this one pick when I can trade back and get the same dude I wanted? Uh, kind of yep. interesting. Obviously, the Giants uh, started to look a little bit better last year after Joe Judge you know, took control of the team and whatnot. Uh, this is... A team with a very college mindset. Uh, they got a lot of dudes, and they want to push them. And you know, we're all going to fight together, and we're you know da 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 da. Now I don't know if that's necessarily going to work all the time, uh, but it seemed to work at some point. You know, middle of the year where they started playing pretty hard for him, and you know, I was a fan of it. I, I kind of like uh, seeing that that whole situation and yeah. the way that it went. They better play. If they don't play hard, he's going to make their grandparents do push-ups on the sidelines. The dude's a, I don't know. <laughs> I hate the way he approaches the game. It's so like, you know. Oh, it's yeah. different. It's, it's very college. Judge. It's very college. Yeah. So yeah, it's it it's different, and I don't know how long guys are going to want to play for him or or how he can mm-hmm. be successful long-term, but, but last year, you know, it seemed to work for a little bit. Obviously, Giants fans were mad about the uh, the Eagles 
you know, uh, last game, deciding to take Jalen Hurts out of the game. Everybody thought they threw it, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, bottom line, Chris and I have talked about this. Uh, win more games. Win more games, yeah. then you don't have to worry about it. So, uh, don't draft Daniel Jones, okay? There you go. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So, I this, mean, hey, I mean, hang on, what, not just not, hang, on. De- hang on. Dave Gettleman was the guy that I was talking about that maybe is pretty good at drafting, but doesn't know what stuff is priced like. Yeah, right? exactly. Maybe Daniel Jones is not the worst guy you could have taken, but he was absolutely the worst guy you could take it at four. At exactly. Four. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, you, you know, uh, you know who they brought in to be his backup this year? No. Uh, Anybody want to take a stab at it? So it's not Colt McCoy anymore, nope. right? Nope. Sure not. Uh, I got no clue. No takers? No clue. I was going to yeah. look it up, but that's just cheating. I can't do that. Chase Mike, Daniel? No. Mike Glennon. <laughs> oh, Mike Glennon Mike is Glennon. the backup. Oh, Mike Glennon, the alien. Yep. He's still go. got a job. There we go. This will there be Daniel Jones. That, if, you, break if you look at Mike Glennon and you don't believe aliens are real, we, can't have a, <laughs> we cannot have a rational conversation about anything yep. else ever. <laughs> What about Sam Cassell? The actual definition of an alien. It was Sam Cassell. I'm telling you this. I believe Mike Glennon's an alien. (laughs) The human body doesn't grow a neck like that or a head like that. Tyron Lue, Sam Cassell. Tell me there's no aliens. Yeah, exactly. Tyron Lue just just doesn't know how to wear a suit. He looks like that guy. Remember in Men in Black when they blew his head off and then it grows back and it's a little small and he's like, ow, man, that hurt. That's Tyron Lue. (laughs) Ty- I, I fully believe Tyron Lue is a normal built person. He just doesn't know how to wear a suit. It's like he's never met a tailor in his life. And so, so he just buys like the biggest suit he can find. And it looks like shit on him. But if he was wearing like jeans and a t shirt, he'd look like a normal human being. Yes. Super funny. Yes. All right. So, super funny. went six and 10 last year. They needed edge rushing help. They need a center, guard, linebacker. So, basically, what team is this? Who the line hell are we talking? We're, we're talking about the Giants. Giants. Okay. Giants. We're, we're still All on right. the Giants. Get them. And, you know, uh, yeah, so yeah. so they trade back in the first round, and they end up with the Bears pick at number twenty, and they draft. You know, they they needed. I, I guess they needed wide receiver. I, I guess. Well, they just mm. paid for the most expensive they got Kenny free agent wide receiver on the on the market. Yeah, yeah. and they have Darius Slayton, and, and they, they have Sterling Shepard. And they brought so in I wasn't John Ross. Sure about this. Yeah, they brought I in don't John Ross. It. Um, and they they got Dante Pettis as well. They they signed him in the off season. Um, <laughs> he sucks. No, you know, no. Hey, well, whatever. I mean, he's there. He, uh, he, I'm a 49er fan. Dante Pettis can go jump off a bridge into the water and hopefully survive and hopefully knows how to swim, but go swim to an island and never play football again. He's useless. Absolutely <laughs> useless. So they draft wide receiver Kadarius Tony, who Chris and I, uh, you know, we're fans of. I mean, he can absolutely move. He can. He's insanely athletic, super quick guy. Uh, don't know that he was worth the pick at 20, but, mm-hmm. you know, we'll see. Like, he he developed a lot in 2020. I mean, he, I think he's still got a long way to go as far as his development, but, I mean, you got a guy. Uh, second round, you got edge rusher Aziz Ojalari out of Georgia. I like that pick quite a bit. Third round, Aaron Robinson, cornerback out of UCF. Fourth round, edge rusher Ellerson Smith out of Northern Iowa. This is another guy. It, those, those kids at Northern Iowa, man – Something else. If you're not watching FCS football, there's some of these teams that you just got to pay attention to. Uh, well, you got something drag going racing on. going on. Yeah, there's some drag race. My house is right next to a school, and you wouldn't believe how the people drive on the street. It's absolutely crap. That happened right next to a school. Yeah, my, there's a school, <laughs> and the, that's what these people do. You don't know how that's many nuts. fights I've gotten to in the front of my house, screaming at these assholes not to speed up and down this road. It's ridiculous. I can believe it. I can believe this it. is a this is a drinking on the front porch situation where you throw empty beer bottles at. Them. I do yep. a lot of it. I do a lot of it. <laughs> this is and one guy. One on the sometimes they'll slam on their brakes when they yell and get all mouthy. And one guy, I started walking up in my flip flops, and his girlfriend goes, "Honey, drive away. This guy's gonna beat you up like you got beat up last week." <laughs> like, like, yeah, you were gonna get beat up. Running yeah, back, I mean, hold on, sixth how, round. Let me get back to <laughs> circle sorry, this thing sorry, back sorry, around. Yes. I Man, we can, we I can sit and talk all day long. We, we need to start having you on regular shows so that we can just bullshit the whole time. I'd be all about exactly. that. Uh, sixth round, we got running back Gary Brightwell out of Arizona. Eh, take a flyer, I guess. Uh, mm. Sixth round, Radarius Williams out of Oklahoma State. He's a cornerback. So you got a couple of flyers late. Uh, other than that, I think they did okay. Like, I, you know, yeah. not as many picks as I would have been a fan of. Um, you know, it's not my favorite draft mm. by any stretch of the imagination. I think I, can't, I think the I can't players they got Arizona got a player drafted. I mean, yeah. it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> the team was awful. Yeah, but they got the team talent. Was awful. They got talent. They just yeah. weren't coached well at all. I don't all. know that they have talent. They don't I have mean, a ton. We're going to disagree with the word talent. I don't think you're using that mm. right. <laughs> all right. So, so I will Kyle, say. I'll say about this draft. I'll keep it pretty short. So it's meh. 
don't yeah. think they really filled many of the needs they really have here. You didn't no. need – like, look, Daniel Jones doesn't suck because the wide receivers were bad. They had plenty of wide receivers and tight ends and everything you could need. He's just not a good decision maker, and he's not very well coached by Joe Judge. Plain and simple, end of story. And, you know, you bring in Jason Garrett to be your offensive coordinator. What do you think you're going to see development? No, you're not. Freddie I always Kitchens say, as an offensive uh, analyst. and uh, Yeah, Freddie coach. Kitchens. Yeah. I mean, come on. Jason Garrett looks like the guy who uses a whole roll of toilet paper to cover the toilet seat in a public bathroom. He looks like a germaphobe. <laughs> but uh, I, I, he really does. But uh, I, I thought it was meh. I mean, the best part about the draft is that he traded down and got more assets for next year, et cetera. And I think that's the best thing that he did and sort of got rid of that stigma that he'll never trade down and never do the right thing. Well, could Tony be a super explosive player and just absolutely, I, but I don't think this is going to improve their win total next year. I don't think this makes them exponentially better in the future. It's just sort of meh for me. Hey, why, why do you think he didn't go after any offensive line help in this draft? Like they didn't sign uh, anybody really in the off season. Um, uh, you know, they, they brought in Zach Fulton, who's a guard out of Houston, but, like, I... I, I, I don't get it. Did I, I, did I, I miss lo- I should have been all offensive linemen as far as I'm concerned. You, I mean, look what you had happen last year. Your star running back, the main piece of your offense, injured for most of the year. Daniel Jones, always running for his life, ended up being your lead rusher. Oh, Wayne Gallman was okay. He's now with the 49ers. But, yeah, I mean... Did they have guys back. hurt last year? Like is is that? Yeah, I mean the the Giants were a mess, but defensive back wasn't their problem. If you remember, that defense actually got a lot yeah, better. Yeah, and it defense, was hard to throw. Yeah. It was hard to throw on that secondary. So I'm not. And the biggest issue for me sure. was was the offensive line, and I just I was kind of you know concerned that they didn't mm-hmm. do anything to look, short look, up. If you're it, listen, hang on. If you're going to spend the number four overall pick one year on 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 uh, Daniel, Daniel Jones. Jones, and then the number two overall pick on a running back, I don't care how good Saquon Barkley is, he could be the second coming of Jim Brown. It doesn't matter. You do not yeah. spend the number two overall pick on a running back. David Gettleman is a moron. If you're the mm-hmm. organization, you're very happy that he got you new assets for next year so you can fire his ass and hire somebody who knows how to build a team. Yeah. I tend I to agree. agree. Chris, you, you got anything else about uh, about the Giants here? Yeah, I don't like this draft. I don't like this. I don't like what they did at all. It, it, it's not that Tony's not good. I think Tony's probably good. I think there's a lot of r- r- wide receivers I like that went behind him a lot, but not a little better than him, a lot better than him. Um, and the the other part of it is is I don't, I don't know what he's trying to do. You, you talk about plan. I don't know what the plan is here outside of let's build more assets for next year and the year after because we're not really sure what our team is supposed to look like, but that's because you cocked up the two drafts in previous years. So th- this is the reason your team doesn't have any like real cohesion. You just spent the most free agent money that anybody in the league spent on a wide receiver. Then you're going to spend your most valuable draft pick on that same position. What are we like? That doesn't make any sense. It's none. And what's wrong with Slayton and Shepard? They're both really good young players. They're, they're both fine. They're both fine. I mean, if yeah. you think that having the best wide receiver, let's say he, let's say this draft pick makes them have the best wide receiving core in the league. Do you think that team that makes that team that much better? No, Daniel because Jones is I your don't, quarterback because you have yep. too many other holes. Yeah, yep. I, I tend to exactly. agree. I would have liked more bites at the apple this, this year. This is a really good offensive line draft. There's no reason for them to have not taken an O lineman. This mm-hmm. is not. Yeah, I tend, I tend yeah, to. I agree. really wish they would have taken one at at 14 or back, back where they were instead of selling to Chicago. So mm-hmm. then Fields falls to the Patriots. Yeah. Ah, there you go. <laughs> I see the real reasoning behind behind what mm-hmm. you wanted. The Dallas Cowboys, America team. They got Dak Prescott coming back. That's a good thing. The offense last season, even with Andy Dalton, was not the issue. The offense was able to put up points. The issue was defense. And obviously, they did not pick up the fifth-year option on, uh, 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 my God, I went blank. What's the guy's name? Van Der Esch, uh, right? Uh, Leighton Van Der Esch, yeah. yeah. So, didn't pick up the uh, the option on him. And Sean Lee decided he's going to retire, but he was never available anyway. So, you know, you had holes that you needed to, to fill up uh, in free agency. They went out and they got Carlos Watkins, defensive tackle out of Houston. Uh, I think that was okay, but they had a bunch of holes on defense that they needed to fill. Their first six picks all went defense. Uh, Their needs were cornerback, safety, defensive tackle, linebacker, and they needed an offensive tackle. Okay, you know, tackle uh, for offense, I I think that they've got it short up, but either way, they... uh, 
They drafted in the first round Micah Parsons out of Penn State, who, I, honestly, last year I would have thought he would have been a top five guy. He is a monster. And I, getting him at 12 is an insane value pick. You, you were able to move backwards and still pick this guy up. I think it's a great pick. They got Kelvin Joseph, cornerback out of Kentucky, in the second round, and he's a stud. Uh, you got defensive interior lineman Osa Odigizua out of UCLA wow. in the third round. You got Chauncey Golston, edge rusher out of Iowa in the third round. Late third round, you got Nashawn Wright, cornerback out of Oregon State. And then in the fourth round, you got linebacker Jabril Cox out of LSU, who actually transferred to LSU last year from North Dakota State, where he was a stud there as well. Uh, played well for LSU last year. That scheme was awful for uh, yep. for Chris's Tigers last year. But fourth round, you got offensive tackle Josh Ball out of Marshall. Uh, Marshall was able to run the ball down people's throats last year. So he is a stud. Uh, Simi Fioko out of Stanford, wide receiver in the fifth round. And then you start taking your flyers, right? Defensive lineman Quinton Bohanna out of Kentucky. Israel Muk- uh, Mukuamu out of South Carolina. Uh, played well with South Carolina. I've watched him multiple times. Could not begin to pronounce his name, but, you know, could be a stud. Well. Maybe Mukuamu. not. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Matt Farniak out of Nebraska, offensive guard in the seventh round. Another guy to take a flyer on. He's a big hog molly. You know how that goes. I I think the Cowboys did well. I love teams that, one, I can see the strategy, right? They they needed to shore up mm-hmm. defense. Hey, your first six picks are all defense, and they're all in the first three rounds, first, you know, early fourth round. Um, I'm a fan of that. And on top of that, you know, I think they got some dudes. So I I, yep. I like what the Cowboys did. I think it was okay. Yeah, I thought Cowboy. This is probably Jerry Jones' best draft since they got Dak in the fourth round. This is an absolutely fantastic, and it's surprising almost because we know how Jerry Jones is, and he always wants to take the flashy guy and wants to take this guy his team doesn't need, and that is not what they did. That defense was the second worst run defense in the league last year. They couldn't stop anyone in the passing game either, and they just come out and you nailed it right on the head. Their first six picks on defense, they only took two players on the offensive side or three players, excuse me, on the offensive side of the ball two of those were linemen and then a late flyer on a wide receiver they don't need good job by the cowboys this is absolutely what they needed to do they focused on the right side of the ball did it hard six players have <laughs> a title of your sex tape did it hard through the first four rounds uh love what the cowboys did here one of the better drafts in this division um I, if not the best draft in the division just based on getting needs and not doing the dumb thing that the cowboys usually did so as much as i hate to say it and as much as i can't stand the cowboys or cowboys fans I do like what the Cowboys did here. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way. I think they did have the best draft in this division. Um, th- this is the first time that it looks like Jerry got absolutely out of the way and uh, people around the organization began to make picks. Um, they went after their needs. I think they filled their needs well. I like Mar- Micah Parsons a lot. I think he's going to be fine. Um, like I said, Gary said this earlier, if he came out last year, he's a top five pick. So right. it, the fact that that he came out this year, he sat out, whatever. It was weird. It, it wasn't there some like fight or something he incited yeah, he, or something, he got, he got, and he people got freaked out a little bit. He, it was not just fight. There was uh, some hazing, hazing. That, went, had, yeah. that went on in the gotcha. locker room that that had some sexual allegations to it. Um, but anyway, the the cornerback from Kentucky, Joseph's going to be really good. Uh, Mark Stoops has put defensive players in the NFL, and every one of them have been absolute pros. Uh, they might not be Pro Bowl guys but they're all making rosters. They're all starting or getting lots of snaps uh, on the teams for the last two or three years. And, and I think he's just going to keep doing that. He's, he's turning things around in Kentucky. Love what he's doing there. Um, and yeah, I, I, I like what the Cowboys are doing. I don't, I don't know how much it affects wins and, and losses this year because sure. these are all rookies. Some right. of them are going to come in, play well immediately. And some of them are going to take a year or two, to actually have an effect on the outcome of games for this yeah. team, which means do I think they can still score 45 a game? Probably. Do I still think they're going to get beat 48 to 45 a lot? Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. I tend to agree. You'll be an over monster. You'll just be hitting overs with this Cowboys team next year. Oh, just hitting oh, the overs. That right. it, it, yep. Do you think the books are ever going to get the balls to actually just start jacking these numbers up? Because they <laughs> well, never really make them that big. It, start, it starts getting there. Like, let's just say eight years ago, you didn't, when you saw a total of 45, 44 and a half, you're like, yeah. ooh, 
that's really iffy. Now you see that, like, okay, I've got to figure out a way to talk myself into this because now it's 54 and a half, 56 and a half. Yeah. Shit, you never thought you would see 10 never years ago. Thought. You're seeing it consistently across the board this year. Sure. And you're going to see a lot of that with this Cowboys team, especially with that. Oh, guy. no, if it's in the 50s, it's over because they're scoring yeah. 25 and they're losing by at least a touchdown in that game. Right. I agree. Exactly. I agree. The Philadelphia Eagles will close out the NFC East and our draft reactions for this season. Um, the Eagles, you know, 4-11-1 last year. They fired Doug Peterson, and they go back to the well. They go and grab Nick Sirianni, who was the offensive coordinator for Frank Reich for the last three years at Indianapolis. Uh, you know, I guess if you had something that worked before, why not go back and, and try the same thing all over again? I, sure, why not? You know, you won a Super Bowl with Frank Reich as your offensive coordinator. Well, just bring in Frank's offensive coordinator when he was a head coach, and maybe it'll work out. Who knows? Yeah. Um they had a lot of needs, you know. I, I, I'm guessing, you know, quarterback probably a need. They didn't do anything with that, but okay, you know, whatever. Cornerback, wide receiver, tight end, and linebacker were the needs that uh, basically the masses uh, said that they would need. And here's what they did. First round, they go and get Devontae Smith out of Alabama. I think it's a pretty good pick. Elite wide receiver. Yep. He's kind of on the small side, but today's game, a lot different than it used to be. You can weigh 166 mm -hmm. pounds and still be an impact guy. Uh, interior offensive lineman Landon Dickerson, he played center at Alabama, but he's also a guard, uh, so you can kind of move him around wherever you need him to be. Uh, they got him mm -hmm. in the second round. Defensive lineman Milton Williams out of uh, Louisiana Tech, this kid's a stud. They got him in the third round. Uh, not a lot of people going to know his name, but he can play. He can absolutely ball. Cornerback Zach McPherson out of Texas Tech. Not sure about that one, but I mean, if you see the you see something with him that you like, okay, that's cool. I, I don't, I, I didn't see him make a bunch of plays last year, but uh, either way, it could have just been the team he was on. Kenneth Gamewell, yeah. running back out of Memphis that they got in the fifth round, he was a redshirt freshman and absolutely lit college football on fire. He was the superstar of the team when Memphis went thirteen and one two years ago. Sat out this past year due to COVID concerns, um, and. And now, of course, he goes fifth round. I think the Eagles got a stud here. I mean, I, I've this said the is, term. This is, this is the definition of why you don't spend first round assets on running exactly backs. because yes. guys like this are in the fifth round. Lightning all bolt the time. Lightning all the time. bolt. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Marlon Tui Piloti. Uh, excuse me, Tui. <laughs> Pretty Pilotti, close, I think. Uh, at a USC uh, defensive lineman. There, uh, they got him in the sixth. This is where you start taking flyers on guys. Edge rusher Taryn Jackson out of Coastal Carolina. I think this kid's awesome. Perfect guy to take a, a stab at. I think he's awesome. I think he's absolutely – I mean, he made that Coastal Carolina defense last year. Uh, sixth round, Jacoby Stevens out of LSU. Um, I think he fell to the sixth round basically due to the scheme that LSU had last year uh, because I think a year prior – I mean, Jacoby Stevens played great. In 2019. Yeah, I was just about to say, yeah, 2019, that 2019 special team, he was unbelievable. Yes. Yes, and, he was. Last year, they, they just, they did him no justice. No, they did not. Uh, and then, of course, they got edge rusher Patrick Johnson out of Tulane in the seventh round. Um, the Eagles look like, you know, with this draft, they they look like they're competent right now. And, and I don't know that they've always looked like that uh, in the past couple of years, but... This year, I mean, they, they got some dudes, and, and they are taking mm -hmm. some chances on some guys that can really hit. There's some boomer bust guys in here, but I, I'm a fan. I like it. Yeah, me too. And look, if, if you go off what the Eagles looked like the past two years, it's they looked like Doug Peterson, which means they look like divorce. That's what Doug Peterson looks like <laughs> is divorce. He just looks like divorce and whiskey right there. That's him. Uh, but I love this draft for the Eagles. I love Devontae Smith. And I know he's a little undersized, but when I – the limited college football I watched last year – and they were Alabama games, this looked like varsity versus the freshman team. This guy gets open. He kind of reminds me of when the year that Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, and Big Ben were just going off in Pittsburgh, and Antonio Brown was absolutely unstoppable. He reminds me of that version of Antonio Brown without the behavioral issues. I love Devontae Smith. The Eagles have absolutely needed to get a sure fire wide. You couldn't come out here again and take some no-namer like a Jalen Rager over a Justin Jefferson again. You cannot make that mistake again. I think they nailed it with this pick in Devontae Smith. I absolutely love it. Dickerson in the second round, if this kid hadn't hurt his ACL, he probably would have been a first-round pick. So I really like that. They need offensive line help. Try to keep Miles Sanders healthy, of course. It looks like you're going all in with Jalen Hurts because you don't want to have to bring in Joe Flacco, who just went there to be the backup. <laughs> uh, nobody wants to see that. So I like what the Eagles did. 
Uh, I thought it was a good draft. Uh, finally, Howie Roseman and company did a good job here. Uh, Devontae Smith, just really, I love that kid. He's one of my favorite players to watch. I just, I don't care what his size is. I think he has a real shot to be rookie of the year. Like the Eagles draft, uh, I thought they did a good job. And look, the NFC East is wide open next year. The, uh, none of these teams are great teams, but they all have a chance. You know, it's going to be another 9-8, and 10-7 and seven, uh, type winner in this division. And the Eagles, if Jalen Hurts can stay upright in that secondary, can stop people, might have a chance. Hey, by the way, uh, Roseman and that bunch, uh, on top of the draft, they're undrafted guys that they brought in pretty good as well. They got Trevon Grimes out of Florida. Uh, that kid's a playmaker. And they brought in Jamie Newman, who was the quarterback that transferred to Georgia. He was at Wake Forest, and everybody kind of slotted him in. He was like a, a top-five PFF guy at coming back to college and opted mm. out for COVID concerns and whatnot. And everybody thought he was going to be first or second-round guy. He opts out. He doesn't even get drafted. And they, they brought him in, gave him a shot. I I mean, I'm a fan. Mm, I like it. Yeah, I uh, I definitely spent a uh, a, a waiver substantial amount of my waiver fab in my dynasty league on picking up Jamie Newman. I, I just I want I want a guy that I think is a good quarterback playing behind a guy that I don't think is a good quarterback. So sure, neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like what they did. I absolutely like what they did. I think they're a quarterback away from being really good. I think mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts is a great guy. It's it sucks that we live in a world we got to put this caveat in there because you can't talk shit about a guy's ability because it mm-hmm. makes you think that oh well if he's such a nice guy you're an asshole for thinking he's not great at football. Mm-hmm. Told you the pussification of America. It's yep. absolutely I, ridiculous. I, I think he's a great guy. I think this year he's going to struggle really badly. Killous. I think the NFL got to watch him play football for a year. When we get tape on guys, when the league gets tape on guys that are very limited in what they're able to do, it it it's almost like clockwork that those dudes get shut down and they get shut down bad. Yeah, I tend to agree. I got, I love Jalen Hurts, you know I do, but uh yeah Chris, I've told you on our show for years that he is not an NFL quarterback. He's, like, he's not an not. NFL quarterback. He's a crazy yeah. stupid athlete, but he is not an NFL quarterback. Yeah. He can run. He can show run, but he, he can't throw. So no. That uh that wraps up our draft coverage for this year. Uh, Kyle, this has been a hell of a lot of fun. A hell of a lot of fun. I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed <laughs> the hell out of this. I've been waiting to this. Home, man. I love you guys, and I love being on. So anytime I will be on, you guys just send me the word, and I'll be here. I love work, sure. and you guys do a great job. Make sure, if you're watching on my channel too, go to sbrpicks.com forward slash NCAAF. F- F, right? Yep. I always get that shit wrong. I always get it wrong. <laughs> but uh, I love these guys, and they know what they talk about in college football. They're, they're the only place I go to if I'm betting college. These are who I go to right that here. That is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Gentlemen, is there anything else that we need to hit on today? That's it, brother. That is it. Well, let's, uh, That's let's it. wind this thing down then. All right, you guys go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF slash NFL slash MLB and Head over to the DFS Bachelor YouTube page. Make sure you check that out. And, of course, you can always follow Kyle on Twitter at DFS Bachelor. You can follow myself and Chris. We don't say this enough, but at Chris B. Giannini and at Gary WCE. Very easy to do. We would love to hear from you. Jump in the comments. We want to hear what you think about this. We've had a lot of people that are commenting and telling us that we're dead wrong. Tell us how we're dead mm-hmm. wrong. I'd love to hear it. That's I'd it. love to hear it. So, you guys yeah. have been fantastic for tuning in. Kyle, Chris, thanks for the time. And uh, you guys take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and and hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.